Hello, welcome to the special edition of To The Point. We have a legend with us today, Subramaniam uh, Baramadurai, of course, is the Vice Chairman of TCS, also a Special Advisor to Prime Minister on Skill Development. Thank you, sir, for joining us on To The Point. First up, let me ask you a TCS-related question, then we'll go to, uh, into other areas. Uh, when you started uh, heading TCS, it was a 400 million company. Now it's over a 6 billion company. What's the secret of your success? Or TCS think, is successful? Yeah. I think we have uh, focused on uh, proactive investments, proactive training of all our professionals, investing for the future fearlessly, but the world-class execution capabilities with sustained improvement over the years. When you did take over TCS, the services and IT sector wasn't really doing that great. Uh, was it really challenging to actually turn around a company which was, of course, on, on decent footing, but putting it over the top, making it one of the biggest Indian companies. Was it really challenging? What really were the challenges that you faced? I think it was extremely challenging because the market was just beginning to emerge. Globalizing and expanding the market with the team was the most critical uh, requirement. Empowerment was the key because you couldn't be running all over the place in spite of the fact I did run quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But I think empowering the team, trusting them and building the systems around it to make sure that you can monitor on a 24 by 7 basis. Right. So those were the areas we focus, great team, great technology and empowerment. I was reading one of your interviews recently and you said it was really important for you and, and very essential then to build a team and keep your good people with you. Uh, is that a mantra that you follow everywhere you go? Is that like a proper business mantra that everyone should follow? Absolutely. You should surround yourself with the best of uh, people, irrespective of uh, where they come from or what kind of uh, questioning they do. Mm -hmm. If you are not open to ideas and if you have only surrounded people who are going to be saying yes to everything you say, then you are in for trouble. Right. So you did manage to do that. You kept your team and you always said, keep your good people low. Don't let them go away. That would have been difficult given the attrition rates. I think when you connect with them and give them the challenges which they are looking for, you can uh, retain the team. Mm. I think when you have grown up with a number of people or you have spotted the right people who complement each other in a positive way, it's a lot more easier than we think in terms of retaining that. Let's talk about the IT sector in general in, in India right now. Services and IT has gone down in the last couple of uh, years, I think. That's also to do with an, you know, an external slowdown that is facing the whole world right now. But do you think it's mostly uh, external factors that have affected our IT sector, the Indian IT sector and the services sector to some extent, but also uh, internal structural faults? I think fundamentally when you look at the uh, IT industry out of the country, Almost 92% of the revenues come from exports. I think the domestic market has been slow to emerge, but having emerged, a lot of focus is being put on the emerging markets or uh, the Indian market itself. But that does not mean you will ignore the developed markets because IT spend by definition is the highest in those markets. To me, it's a question of evolution of the market and then the challenges of the Western Hemisphere which led to some of these current situations. Mm. Structurally, there are no internal problems because the companies which are uh, made up of the industry quite sound. are uh, quite a bit of uh, making quite a bit of investment in innovation as an example. Mm. They see the next wave of growth has to be through innovation and through differentiators mm. and that culture has set in within the ecosystem itself. So, you, the external slowdown that we are seeing right now, you are saying that we can in fact be insulated if we actually get our uh, policy in some fact, right? I think if we get our market access to multiple places mm -hmm. and we also look at as the emerging emerged markets or the developed markets go into certain uh, challenges, how do you look for those opportunities where they still need your capabilities? Mm -hmm. IP creation as an example, policy, policy enablement for IP creation, the investment in R&D, all of these will take us to the next level. Right. Uh, this budget that we just saw, uh, Mr. Chidambaram was, of course, his back was against the wall right now. Uh, and he did manage to scrape through a budget that most people thought was a very safe budget. Uh, not much for IT and services there. Would you agree with that? No, I think he has given a bunch of things which are very, very important. Mm -hmm. could, could you outline The whole uh, dividend uh, distribution. The LDT. He has again uh, listened to the industry and given that SOP which means 15% tax on that, so that a lot of uh, foreign exchange will come in, the dividends from your subsidies can be brought in, provided they are profitable. The second one is on the education, we need to see how he has played it very well. For example, when you look at uh, vocational education, like the BPO scaling, etc., I think the service tax has been removed. And this was one of the requests from the industry itself. 
The third component is the allocation for education where you are going to see a lot of institutions churn out number of good people, good professionals. These are some important initiatives. I think uh, overall we are very, very satisfied. The only thing would have been worried is if we had uh, imposed certain things that would have been more dangerous. Under Which he hasn't really done. He has really not done So, that. Uh, are you saying that uh, given you're, you're, you're um, you know, a giant in the IT sector, do you think this budget was pretty decent for the IT sector and services sector? Absolutely. I would say that it was pretty decent. Mm -hmm. It was uh, not going to impact. Mm -hmm. The NASCOM projections are going to be very much intact and the industry should go be in about 11 to 14 percent in the coming year. What is your outlook for, for the IT sector and the services sector? I'm, I'm clubbing the both together because I mean they sort of go together, but what is your outlook for the next say uh, decade? Indian IT sector, is it going to expand the rate that we you had hoped that it would expand? With? I think it will expand in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. One is the companies which are going to be innovating, which are product orientation, intellectual property integration to the solutions they provide. Mm -hmm cloud-based offerings, mobility, analytics, etc., they are going to thrive. Mm. The companies which are, I am also a player, me too, are not going to be successful. Mm. They will find an exit route. Mm. So I think you are going to see a lot of entrepreneurial activity which I am witnessing as I travel around the country. Mm. That's going to show up in the next couple of years. Right. We'll take a small break, so we'll come back with a couple of more questions for you. Uh, Subramanam Ramadurai is still with us. On to the point. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Mr. S. Ramadurai is still with us. Uh, sir, uh, like I said before, I was reading one of your interviews uh, and I keep doing that uh, from time to time. Uh, somebody asked you a question, what are the three biggest challenges in front of India right now since it's a growing economy, since it's an Asian, uh, you know, fast growing economy, third, third largest economy in Asia as well. What are the biggest challenges that you see? Three biggest challenges. It could be anything. It could be political, economic or whatever. What do you think they are? I think uh, a definite need for growth with employment and employability. Because of the demographic profile, if you don't address the aspirations of the youth in terms of writing the, getting the right employment, we are in for some trouble. Mm -hmm. So I think growth, but growth with jobs is the most critical ingredient. Underlying that is the most important ingredient, vocational education, skilling, and the education itself. If we don't address this, growth is not going to happen, or growth with employment is not so going to happen. They are absolutely interconnected. To me, we need to focus on the soft infrastructure, as I call it, namely the uh, vocational education and the educational infrastructure. And the linkages between the vocational education to the mainstream education has to be very tight. Mm. Third is the industry participation and entrepreneurial energy and the entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurship creation mm. is going to be a very, very fundamental requirement because that's where the jobs are going to be. Last but not the least is the small and medium enterprises which are the backbone of everything which happens in an economy of our size. How do you upgrade them? How do you link them to the markets and more importantly to the global markets? So two, two things that I, I figured from there. MSMEs have been doing decently fairly well. Uh, that's what the government projections say. So you're obviously saying that MSMEs are the backbone of the economy and if they start doing well, we could be on a higher growth path. Yes. The first thing you said, sir, was uh, growth with jobs. Now, that hasn't been easy for India in the past, I think, since the recession started, 2008. Uh, our pre previous finance minister, who is now the president of the country, of course, tried his best. Now, Mr. Chidambaram is doing the same thing. Why do you think that our high growth target, which we had kept, we were growing at nearly double digit for a while there. Uh, but now we have come down to even 5.5 and 5.2 percent. Why do you think that rate that, that is? Is it, is it only because uh, external global slowdown and inflation connected together or is it some something else? No, there are certain internal uh, things which are very important. Yes, external uh, challenges have been a problem for sure. But when I look at the internal ones, the interconnection and creating a whole systemic view of things is very important. Mm -hmm. If you take our primary education or the secondary education, you need to introduce vocational education in the schools, which has not happened. Of late that has started where certain pilots are being run in Haryana or Assam it's very or nascent, et cetera. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. nascent. Mm -hmm. Advocacy with regard to uh, parents feeling that vocational education is good for the kids and it's not always a paper degree that's going to get them jobs. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the transition from the uh, secondary education to the ITIs and or the degree programs, but then mobility between the two is the second part of it. Mm -hmm. The national skills framework, which is very, very fundamental for our well-being because how do you get the credits and how do you make sure that when you get those credits, you have a certain level of competency which gets you the jobs. The demand side players, namely the industry or what I want to do or I want to join a small or a medium enterprise, 
have to recognize these professional skills through the certification mechanisms and ensure that you get the right wages and the right benefits when you get that certificate. Mm -hmm. I think these are some things if you do not roll out in its entirety, everything is a piecemeal approach and a piecemeal approach never succeeds. Never succeeds. So I think a systemic view and an integrated view is what we are trying to push for mm -hmm. and I think we are seeing certain signs. Last but not the least is the deployment at the state level because most of these are state subject. So having the state skill missions is another thing which is exceptionally important and extremely important. Again going around the states and convincing them to put these missions but with the overseeing body being the chief secretary or the chief minister of the state or some very essential. At that level they have to uh, basically get their act together. Sir, you uh, your special advisor to prime minister as well now. How has the experience really been? It hasn't been too long. It's uh, you just uh, started. How has the experience been working with uh, a renowned economist like Mr. Bhutan? Well, he's exceptionally good because he's a great listener and he's uh, willing to uh, put in the processes which are needed. I think when you have 18 ministries running the skills program in the country plus the National Skills Development Corporation, integrating them in a holistic manner is what we are trying to do and those are the kind of issues which I generally discuss with our Honorable Prime Minister. Right. So could you tell us a bit more about the sort of uh, perhaps policy changes or some of the programs that you might be starting soon uh, and give us a glimpse of what really to expect? I think when we look at specific sectors, that's where the implications are going to be. Construction sector, as an example, is one of the largest employers. Hospitality, tourism sector is the second one. Retail, healthcare. So focus on these four or five uh, sectors, but more importantly, where the funds allocations are going to come from. Namely, if a construction cess is available, can we use that for scaling? Mm. If there are other uh, MSME programs, can you use certain ways of uh, getting the money or uh, certifications through those mechanisms? Can you have the private players participate in it? Can we create public-private partnerships in this initiative? So the business models, allocation of funds, integrating them for a certain occupational standard with the competency levels is what we are trying to do on the ground. Right. Uh, so you, you also, uh, I want to get your views uh, on, on uh, uh, inflation in the country as well. That of course is the biggest bugbear that the government has to face since it came to power. Uh, the RBI has been holding tight for a while. They did uh, ease rates uh, just recently and there is more pressure on them to do, the, do so again. Uh, do you think the RBI played its cards right when it did the monetary tightening cycle for over 18 months and then they slightly let CRR out and then perhaps uh, they did one. Do you think that was the right strategy? Has it really worked? Because Mr. Subarao has said that our policy is going to be inflation centric. Has that really worked? Because inflation hasn't really come down that much. See, I'm no economist, mm. but I think I can take a guess. Mm. Essentially, the inflation is a big worry. Mm. And the position of the government as well as the RBI has been inflation, inflation has to be brought down. So I think if we even look at the recent budget, it's definitely with the view to re reduce the current account deficit in the process the inflation also. I think with the RBI looking at the parameters, they will take a very holistic view and the expectation is that there will be a certain implication with regard to the interest rates. I think we are one of the few countries where interest rates are one of the highest at this point in time and that needs to be addressed for the investment to flow back and create the kind of jobs we need and the growth that is expected. Looking westward, sir, you obviously travel quite a bit. Uh, Mr. Barack Obama is back in the White House right now. His first term, he was slightly aggressive towards India, saying that, you know, about the jobs and the outsourcing. I think, uh, what is your sense of his second term? Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be the rab as rabid uh, in his second term? I think term? my own view is the industry and the companies and the people decide what is good for them. Mm. They're not going to be carried away by the political slogans or political implications. Mm. So long as there are no policy changes with regard to movement of professionals and or connecting with any part of the world to create the innovative ecosystem, mm. things should be okay. Mm. I think we should uh, see how the industry believes and says it's going to do. The innovation centers created by multinational corporations here, the technology companies from the West, mm. are an example that they see the talent potential of our country and the inherent strength which they are not going to let go. Right. Uh, on that note, sir, another small break. We'll come back with two more questions for you. As Ramadurai stays with us on the other side of the show. Welcome back. Mr. S. Ramadurai is still with us, uh, speaking to us on to the point, sir. Many thanks for, of course, joining us. Uh, just a little bit more of your time. Uh, going forward now, sir, uh, India was at one time considered to be an Asian tiger and a fast-growing economy. There was a little bit of a dip somewhere there. But do you think the prospects are good going forward now? I think I'm an optimist and I think the prospects are absolutely good. 
the recent budget and the implications of that is going to play out in the next couple of years. Mm. None of this should be seen as a one-year budget or whatever it is, but the structural uh, parts of the economy, mm. if they are addressed and the investment starts flowing in, we are going to see growth with employment. So, uh, two, three Prime Ministers and Presidents have come uh, to India in the recent months. Uh, Putin came first, then Mr. Cameron came in, then the French President Francois Hollande came. They all want to invest in India. They all want to sell uh, uh, their arms to India or whatever there is. Uh, do you think India should in fact look to these people or try and strengthen its relationship with the US? And, and what are your views on China? I think we should be completely open to dialogue with any country. There are merits in uh, multiple uh, partnerships. I think uh, my views on China are we cannot afford to ignore that country. But cracking the Chinese market with regard to access and selling your products and services is very, very important. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Any market when you start is always tough. But I think we have got to push that and the entrepreneurial energy must take us there. Mm. Involve the locals, understand and adopt the culture wherever it is required. Mm. But more importantly, ensure that the openness and the transparency and the rules of the game are very clear to everybody. Right. The reforms process, sir, that the Prime Minister started, of course, many, many people opposed it on political grounds or whatever. But, but do you think he's on the right track and how badly do we need those reforms? I think we very badly need the reforms. We need to make sure that the industry confidence builds. There is a continuity of policy. There is no backtracking. And we must be very clear that uh, long-term policy implications are very well known to everybody. What is the outlook on TCS for the next five years? I think TCS is a great company. It has got a great leadership now. It has got a great team. And my outlook is they will do very well. Uh, has uh, Cyrus Mystery coming in changed anything? I think no, he's uh, his own person, he has built a great team and he's trying to build a very, very strong partnership with all the companies that he is driving. Right. Uh, Mr. Ramadurai, thank you so much for joining us so on much. To The Point. That, of course, was a legend in the IT industry. As Ramadurai, also Special Advisor to Prime Minister, Vice Chairman, TCS. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for talking to us. Thank on you so to much. The point. Thank you so much.